Despite being a middle evolution, Kadabra has still had a pretty interesting history in the TCG. Even in the base set era where middle evolutions typically weren't very good, they were just a stepping stone to get to whatever the final evolution was, Kadabra is still a pretty solid card. Whenever I do my builds of damage swap decks, I always include Kadabras, at least two or three copies, because it is useful. Recover and Super Sire are both really solid attacks within the TCG, although it is pretty fragile with only 60 HP reflecting its in-game stats. It's still kind of nice to threaten your opponent with an attack that can deal 50 damage instead of just using Pokemon Breeder to go straight into Alakazam. The same goes for Dark Kadabra, which is the next Kadabra card to be printed in the Rocket set. It's got a really nifty ability that you can use from the bench. It lets you recycle your hand a little bit and set up your strategy. Also, Mind Shock is a pretty solid attack. 30 damage for 2 energy is always a good thing this early in the format. So again, it's one of those rare instances where you actually want to include the middle evolution because of its usability with that Pokemon power and sometimes Mind Shock whenever you use Dark Alakazam. The next Kadabra is Sabrina's from the gym sets, and this card has an amazing first attack. You could actually build an entire deck just around Life Drain. It's like an updated version of Raticate from Base Set, where you can set up a really easy one-two punch by using Life Drain and then just retreating into anything on your bench and attacking for at least 10 damage. The next Kadabra is from the Japanese exclusive Vending Machine series, and this card has some interesting artwork in it. You notice those symbols in the background there. Those are actually taken from Zener cards, or Zener cards, which uh, are used to determine if someone has psychic ability. So what you'll do is you'll hold up one of these cards and look at it intensely, and the person that might be a psychic will guess the card that you're looking at by telling you the symbol. Yeah, yeah, seems legit. But that'll be important in just a bit. So let's look at the actual translation of this card, and again, this is a middle evolution card that you could basically build an entire deck around. Psycho Panic is a hard counter to a lot of Psychic Pokemon, because if you use it on a Psychic Pokemon, it does double the damage. So its base damage is actually 60 against Psychic Pokemon, but you also have to consider most Psychic types, especially Ghost types and things like Mewtwo, they are also weak to psychic types, so this attack's base damage is actually going to be 120 for only 2 energy. So this would be a great tech to go into any deck where you think you're going to be up against a Pokemon that's weak to psychic. That are also psychic types, like your Mewtwo's and your Gengar's. Blink is another really solid attack where you're dealing 30 damage for 3 energy, which is alright, but it has the side effect that could possibly prevent damage done to Kadabra on your opponent's next turn. The Kadabra from Expedition can't have a deck based just around it, however it does get a little boost in HP which helps its survivability so that it can get off an energy recall which is a really great attack to set up for evolving into Alakazam the next turn. So Kadabra does tend to have this feature of not just being a useless middle evolution card that you only use to get to your final stage, it's actually a really great support and setup card for any Alakazam decks. When printed in Skyridge, Kadabra got to keep that 70 HP with some pretty decent attacks, nothing spectacular, but automatically putting your opponent to sleep is a great effect even for one energy and 40 damage off of 3 energy is pretty good in itself, but this is the last Kadabra card ever printed. There are only 6 Kadabra cards, and it just so happens to appear in the very last set that was ever distributed by Wizards of the Coast. After Sky Ridge, those rights went back to the Pokemon Company at Nintendo. But this isn't the reason that Kadabra cards stopped existing. It's not like Nintendo has anything against the Pokemon itself. It's actually because of this guy right here, Yuri Geller. He is an Israeli illusionist who claims to have invented the uh, act of bending spoons using telekinesis. It's one of his main gimmicks. It's one of the reasons he got famous internationally. And yes, the design of Kadabra and Alakazam was definitely influenced by this guy because he claims to have psychic powers, and his main gimmick is bending spoons with his mind, and that is most definitely why Kadabra and Alakazam hold spoons. Mewtwo even has a giant spoon that it fights with in the manga. 
Kadabra's Japanese name is even pronounced very similar to the way a Japanese person would pronounce the name Yuri Geller. And while some people would think that it is an honor to have a Pokemon based off of you and your renowned abilities, uh, however, Yuri Geller did not think that, uh, and especially because Nintendo and Game Freak and the Pokemon Company didn't get his permission before doing this, and that's a little bit of a problem. Geller claimed that Kadabra was an unauthorized parody of himself, which is basically true, however, he didn't stop there. He claimed that the design of Kadabra was anti-Semitic, uh, mainly because he said the star on his forehead resembled that used by the satanic religion and certain cults, and that the lightning bolts on its stomach resembled those used by Nazi SS agents. But as I said before, those images were taken straight off of Xener cards, which, like the bending of spoons, is just like a psychic paraphernalia that's within the culture's mindset. So in this aspect, Geller didn't do his research before making these statements. Quoting a statement directly from Geller, he said, Nintendo turned me into an evil occult Pokemon character. Nintendo stole my identity by using my name and my signature image. If you're watching this video, you're probably a Pokemon fan and know that this statement can be greatly debated, uh, which is exactly what it has been doing because Geller sued Nintendo in 1999 and as of now, the end of March 2019, that court case is still ongoing. So this is why no more cadaver cards have been printed because they would be using basically his name on the title of the card and have spoons on the card as well. So on Nintendo's side to ensure that no more legal implications happen, they just completely stopped printing Kadabra cards. So that Kadabra in Sky Ridge, which came out in 2003, is the last version of a Kadabra card that has come out. Furthermore, Kadabra has not appeared in the anime since 2006. Geller is basically treating this as a defamation case, which he's also well known for and has a history of suing people that have come out as saying he's fake or by producing videos or documentaries in which he fails to bend a spoon or produce any other psychic results when in a controlled environment. In researching this court case, I actually found that Geller is still up to shenanigans. This is a news clipping from yesterday. Geller claims to be instrumental in getting Theresa May elected in the first place, but now he's going against her by organizing a psychic attack on Brexit, and this is how he's gonna stop it. Yeah. So I feel a little sympathy for Nintendo, and luckily there have been ways that they've gotten around this, uh, like the mysterious treasures Abra, which can evolve straight from Abra into Alakazam by using one of its attacks. However, this is the last Abra card ever printed, which was part of the Diamond and Pearl block. Ever since then, they've been able to just make Alakazam a basic Pokemon in the form of an EX card. So will we ever see a Kadabra card again? It seems very unlikely as this court case is just going to keep dragging on. But I do think that if the court case gets settled, Nintendo might be ballsy enough to start printing Kadabras again. I mean, after all, Kadabra still appears in the games, and that doesn't seem to be a problem for Geller. But that may be because this court case has been going for so long, and he's so far up his own ass that he doesn't even realize that Kadabra is in a video game as well. Stay tuned to the channel for some more deck videos coming up soon, as well as future TCG history videos. If there's any content that you guys would like to see, especially concerning the early years of Pokemon, whether it be the TCG, movies, merchandise, let me know down in those comments. And in the meantime, I will be launching my own psychic counterattack to make sure that Brexit does happen. See you guys next time. Bye.